Hello everyone, this is Mundar Nagavan and this video we are going to see what is hook and what is predefined fixtures. What is hooks? In generally when you write the test cases in Playwright, let's say you have some different set of code. You want to open the browser, you want to close the browser and there are some scenarios you want to repeat the code again and again. For example, after completing every test case, you might want to clear the cache. So that will be the repeated code for every test case. So that you want to make it as a separate block and that can be done through the hooks. There are some scenarios you want to make that code to execute just the starting of the test execution and ending of the test execution. And this has to be separated by the block. So this kind of scenarios and just to avoid the repeated code we will be using the hooks. In general hooks will be like a before all, after all, before each, after each. If you summarize very simple, you have let's say one test case and if you want to execute some code block before and after you will use the before each. When you write start writing the code before each, tomorrow if you had one more test case the same code will be executed for the new test case also. So that means that the before each will consider each and every test case that you add to the test script file. Before all and after all, no matter how many test cases you have, it always execute very start of the execution and very end of the execution. As the name suggests, it will be the before all and after all. So this is a very basic concept about the hooks. Just to understand this basic concept, in order to move to the next step, we will execute a simple test cases. However, these test cases does not have any logic, just having the console messages, but we will try to understand how it works. And in our test case here, our test suit, you have two test cases. That means that no matter how many test cases you have in your test script, the before all execute only once and after all executes after all the test execution. That means that after executing two test cases, it will execute only once. However, before each will execute two times because we have two test cases. Just before starting execution of test one and test two, it will execute the same way for the after each. Just to confirm this one, let's start writing this one. Okay, so here we can go to here and it will be the file hooks.test.spec.ts execute. And just go to the result. Or here you can click the reveal test output. Here you can see before all executed only once and after all executed only once and before each executed just before the test one and after each and before each again has been executed because we have one more test case and after each this is belongs to the test two and followed by the after all. So this way we can understand this before each after each very clearly and before all and after all as well. In case if you practice this one if you getting something like a before all executing multiple times then you might check this file go to the play rate config ts and make sure you have the fully parallel false. If you make it as a true, what happens is like it executes every test cases parallelly and it will consider before all so many times. Just to avoid this one, if you have any issues, just make sure this is false. Then it will be executing in the same way that we discussed. Now coming to the next topic, which is the predefined fixtures. Let's go to the documentation first and understand what are the predefined fixtures. Predefined fixtures are nothing but just now we have seen if you have some code block has to be executed before and you will be using the hooks. But let's say you want to have some object, you want to have some data predefined and you want to use directly that object or that data for your test cases. In that case, the simple way as per our previous understanding we might create the object in our before all. But we need this object not only for one test case or one test script file, we need for across all the areas. Then we will go for the fixtures. However, we are going to see only the built-in fixtures here. So that means that by default, Playwright gives some fixtures, built-in fixtures to you for every test case. So that you can use that fixtures without writing any code and directly you can open the browser. For simple, if you go very order wise, you will be creating the first browser object 
like this and you will be creating the context context will be the single place where it will maintain the cache and user details and after that you will be having the page so in that page you will be creating the page and you will be navigating to the different URLs basically you open the browser you create the context which will be like a internal common place for all the things for the same context so that the same page if you navigate and if you create one more page this pages will share the same context in simple you will be creating all these three steps every time if you want to create the same order browser context and page bcp but this is the repeated code most of the time we will be going with the default options as per our playwright config so for that case the playwright creates the page object that you see in the line number three here till this point it will create the page and it will give to you directly but this will be given as the context object so that means that wherever you create the test cases even in previous test cases you might have noticed something called let's go to our sample test case demo spec here we have something called flower brackets page so that means that here you can see there is no variable we created like page but still we can use the page so that means that this is the predefined fixtures given to you now you might have a question like this is a fixture and I can use a directly page why do we need to have the flower brackets in general before all after all our test cases will be given with the object called context so this context will have different other things for example this context object is passed to the test before each after each and it has to be used for page inside the test this context object has so many things inside that page browser context even context have one more key value as a context which will have some information about our context and a test player there are a lot of options will be inside your context generally if you are from java background you might wonder what is our context object it is something like a, some existing object but however if you want to understand very quickly let's consider this example you know that in javascript objects will be just created can be created like this also and here you can see that it has the different keys and values t1 t2 t3 it can have even different nested structure also for simplicity we will make it like a t1 t2 and t3 either i can use these references directly object dot t2 so that i can get the value in other words i can just extract that only specific t2 without creating one more let's say object or variable i can directly use it by using the same name inside our for basis and i can mention the object directly here here you can see i am not creating the object or i am not calling object dot t2 something i am just mentioning the object but i am destructuring only to the t2 so that means that in this object wherever you find the t2 this will be can you i mean it will be taken to the t2 variable so next lines i can use the t2 for example let's see we'll try the same thing go to the browser just create or inspect and you will go to the console clear everything let's see i'm just i created this object so here you can see as of now i created only the object if i just put op enter and you can see it will be having only the object details let's try to see the t2 enter and here you can see t2 is not defined so one way to use this t2 is like object dot t2 enter i can get the value but still i cannot use the variable t2 because i need to have always the op object so that's the reason we will be creating this kind of expression here you can see i am mentioning the same key name inside the flower brackets and i am mentioning the object so that means that from this object i need only the t2 variable a t2 key value now it has been executed now if i type t2 and enter you will get the value so this is the same thing happening here if you go to the vs code now here you can see the context object has been given here and in this case let's say go to our sample or let's say any test case here sample here you can see the context ha object has been given but we don't want entire context because we are writing the test cases this context can be used only in case of before all or before each and after all kind of thing because we are changing regardless of test cases we are changing something at the context level 
So that's the reason playwright by default it does not allow context directly to be used inside the test but it will allow in other areas like a before all. Since it's a test case we will be having the page and you know that now we have the context given to every test cases but it will be allowing only page to be used. So that's the reason we need only the page from the object called context so that's the reason we are using like this. So that means it automatically takes only the page and you can use further. Now coming to the practice. Here you can see the same way you can get the browser. We know that just now we have seen the theory part right. So the playwright or uh, let's say this context object having so many things page, browser, context, test even you can get the test information, you can get the playwright object itself, you can get the log, there are a lot of things you can do. So the same way we are getting the browser object, we are getting the page object in the after all. Sometimes even we can get the context, that means sir, the context object itself having one more key called context. Even that can be taken and uh, as usual in the test cases you will be using the page. Right? Now let's see this, uh, let's say hooks practice. So before all I am just printing the version because I know that I don't want to print however the test report has it but this is the one functionality I don't want to repeat for every test case but I want only once before starting the execution. So that's the reason I am mentioning the browser version. After executing everything I need to close that. Because I am executing multiple test cases in the same browser which is using the same page object. After executing everything only I need to close the browser it's not about after executing each and every test case and before each and after each at the test level for example I might clear the cookies I might clear the permissions it might be in the different status or sequence for example before executing every test cases I need to clear the permissions and after executing every test case I need to clear the cookies so that the next test case will be entirely new without any old cookies and in our test cases it's simple because we are focusing mainly on the hooks and the fixtures concept here and I am just opening on web page for OpenAI and here I am opening for the Playwright Dev which is for the text fixtures documentation and I am checking something on the URL whether it has some OpenAI or fixtures. As a test case it does not have any value but however it, just to understand the concept we are doing this one. Now what happens? Here since I am using the browser I can use the browser object to get the version here I am using the page as you know here I am using the context object I can clear the permissions at the context level as we discussed context will be common to every pages that you create from that and it will not share with other context. It's like an internal memory area you can consider as of now. And since I am using other things looks good. Now let's go to the test cases and execute the practice. It has been executed. Now go to the report. Here you can see test one started in before hooks it has the before all and before each then after hooks it has executed only the after each because we have one more test case to go. So let's go to the second test case. It directly started with before each because it's the second test case and after hooks it executed after each hook because for the test case level and since it's the last test case it has the after all test I mean after all hook also. Now if you see this both concepts we can clearly understand hooks by using hooks we can execute some bit of code or some snippet for every test case or before all the test cases and after. And fixtures here you can see there is some object already available to us so that we can make use of it. But do you think both are same or do you think hooks can be converted into the fixtures? Yes of course. We can convert the hooks concept if it is required for each and every test cases across all the test scripts then you can convert this hooks code into the fixtures but not vice versa. Right? So in that case in next video we will try to see how to create our own fixtures. It's not only for page object or browser even we can create for the test execution or test data also. So that means that we can create some existing object we can use across the different test cases like how we use the page. That we will see in the next video. I hope this video covers the understanding about the hooks and its sequence and the predefined fixtures and what are the predefined fixtures that you can see here already. 
just go here and see this page so this page context browser browser name and request A request will be for AP as of now you can ignore but these are the predefined fixtures and other things also we have seen clearly so this is all about this video so thanks all thanks for watching and have a great day